We have here Riley Miller. He's a law student at Drake University and a clerk in the Marion County Attorney's Office. He's a Republican who is currently undecided. Riley? Thank you. Uh, on the debate stage, you have somewhat of abandoned uh, the uh, tact and diplomacy that I would look for in a president. I'm all for uh, keeping it real and dogging the establishment, but there's a gravitas in, uh, that I look for in those who represent our country. How do you see the balance between keeping it, being authentic yep. and maintaining that presidential demeanor? I appreciate the question. I think it's very candid. This is what I love about Iowa. <laughs> I get tougher questions from you guys than I do from the media, that's, and that's good. It's why we're here. So I, I appreciate that. Look, here's the standard I use for holding myself to or holding any president to. I want us to be able to look our kids in the eye and tell them that I want you to grow up and be like him. It's been a long time since we've held our presidents to that standard. That's the standard I want you to hold me to. That's a high standard. Now, I think about that in judging the way that I comport myself in different areas. Am I going to tell my kids to go to school and be a bully? No, I'm not. But I'm going to tell them, if somebody bullies you or hits you, you're going to hit them back 10 times harder. And that's the way I'm going to lead this country. You, can't, you have to be, as we say in our family, you have to be strong enough to protect your kindness. So if you watch those debates carefully, I don't engage in four-letter words. I mean, there are other candidates who have called me dumb, scum, and worse that I'm not going to repeat here. I didn't go after them, but if they're going to come after me, I'm not going to be a president, whether it's Xi Jinping or Vladimir Putin or anybody else who's gonna roll over. When I'm leading the United States, the same rule applies. If you hit us, we hit you back 10 times harder. But it's not for the sake of being a bully. It's for protecting our inner kindness too. And I think it's important that we have a president that has both of those attributes. I've done more podcasts probably than, probably than most presidential candidates in history combined, mostly because podcasts are new, I'll admit that. But I will tell you, that's a different setting. And so I believe I think it's the book of Ecclesiastes that teaches. And my faith teaches me the same thing. There's a time and place for everything. There's a time and place for fortitude. There's a time and place for justice. There's a time and place for mercy. And I think it's going to take all of those attributes, every last ounce of each of those attributes, to stand for this country, to reunite this country, and revive who we are. You don't want a wilting flower in the White House, but you also want somebody who understands what we are fighting for. That's the standard I want you to hold us to. We will aspire to hold ourselves to. And I think that sometimes being a parent is what gives me my moral clarity. And I hope through the rest of this campaign, we're just getting warmed up. I hope to be able to earn your trust that yes, I do have what it takes to tell you the truth. I'm not gonna hide the truth from you. If you want someone who's gonna speak truth to power, vote for somebody who's gonna speak the truth to you, to the Republican party, do it unvarnished without sugarcoating. And I don't do much sugarcoating, but also somebody who as you, I believe want, can stand for the ideals that would make our founding fathers proud and would make our children proud as well. Speaking, speaking of those debates, let me ask yeah. you about something that you said at the debate last week. You used the phrase inside job to yeah. describe what happened on January 6th. The next day, Capitol rioter Alan Hosteller uh, highlighted your comments at his sentencing. He is going to prison for 11 years. A hostager uh, threatened members of Congress. He brought a hatchet, knives, pepper spray, stun batons, tactical gear to the U.S. Capitol. Are you concerned that a convicted felon like that is now promoting your comments in court? So here's my concern, Abby. And I want to tell you guys where I'm at. If you had told me, it's close to three years ago that January 6, 2021 happened. If you had told me three years ago, back when I was a biotech CEO, not steeped in this world, I was just consuming passive media, but was focused on my world of developing medicines. If you had told me that January 6 was in any way an inside job, the subject of government entrapment, I would have told you that was crazy talk. Fringe conspiracy theory nonsense. I can tell you now, having gone somewhat deep in this, it's not. I mean, the reality is this. We do have a government, first of all, we have to acknowledge that has lied to us systematically over the last several years about the origin of COVID-19 about the Hunter Biden laptop that we were told was false by 51 CIA experts and otherwise before we now know that it was true. You can go straight down the list, the Trump-Russia disinformation collusion hoax, all of it. Now we come to January 6th. The reality is we know that there were federal law enforcement agents in that field. We don't know how many. 
I think it's Mr. shameful. And if, if I may finish just answering, well, let me this just. Is, this is I, really I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt you here because because you're I know this, that the establishment were, doesn't approve of this message. I know that this, there were but federal agents. We should agents. be able to talk about this. You're saying that there were federal this is, agents. This is important to talk about. This, you this are saying important. there were federal agents in the crowd on on, yes. on January 6th. Yep. There is no evidence that there were federal agents in the crowd on January so, 6th. So why, before Congress, when pressed on what the number was, they didn't say there were none. They just couldn't so say how many there were. So you're saying that there is no, that you have not seen evi any evidence so that we've there seen were, multiple, and so you We've seen multiple that informants suggesting that there were. We know people were, we know people were FBI informants who were asking Is there this. any evidence? May I, may I, may I just, may just there, finish let me, this well, and let you me, can come back let and question me. Well, let me clarify. I know this is very uncomfortable for you. I'm going to clarify my question I know this is an uncomfortable issue for many people, but we have to do the truth here. I'm going to clarify my question because I want to make sure that you understand what I'm asking. I understand this. Deeply. And I told you, I was where working three years the, ago. I'm where not there is now. Where is the evidence? Yes. Where is the evidence that the government had a plot, so let's do this. an inside I, job? But no, no, no I'm going to tell you what an inside job is because I'm not going to. I'm not violence due respect, on January 6th. Where I'm not going to let you put words in my that? mouth. I'm going to put my words in my mouth. And I'm going to tell you what, what I mean by that. Where is the evidence that the government was involved Entrapment. in planning or executing okay. January 6th? Where so is I'm going to I'm going to give you hard facts. And, and if I may, Abby, I know this is going to be a little uncomfortable. But we're gonna we're, we're gonna go through this, and you can and you can you can push Just back on it for after the evidence. that, and you can push back on that, and let's do this fairly. Why did they suppress footage of now what's been released? Two hundred hours of footage of shooting rubber bullets into that crowd, shooting tear gas into that crowd. You didn't see that before. You saw what the response was to that. Uh, now you see footage coming out of actually rolling out the red carpet. For Capitol Mr. Police allowing Mr. people in, again, right through the front door. The vast door. majority I mean, of that the footage evidence should have been released shows, before, Abby. Mr. Ramaswamy, the vast majority of the before. footage shows and my police officers is being overrun and, and I want to talk about one more by case. violent this is really important. rioters. That's yeah, I'm going to give you hard, I'm give you some of hard facts. Of it shows. So what, here's what entrapment you can't is. Cherry yeah, pick. I'm not cherry picking. You if I may finish, Abby. If I may finish, Abby. I'm not cherry picking. Examples. To the contrary. To the country, you, you know who cherry picked. You know who cherry picked. The government that, that is what happened. The government cherry picked 6th. 12 hours of footage when there was 200 hours of footage. So cherry picking was the government, not me. Release so, the whole thing. And let me let me just finish one thing too, because this is super important as a topic. So when you, I when, think this is a civil libertarian issue of our time. When we Gretchen talking, Whitmer's kidnapping. I want to keep. It, I want to be really clear on this, because it's the same issue in the same FBI, same even part of the FBI. Three people who were in an alleged plot to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer were acquitted at the end of trial because it was entrapment. That is, government agents put them up to do something they otherwise wouldn't have done. They gave them credit cards with spending limits of up to $5,000, encouraged them to buy munitions, plan something they weren't otherwise willing to plan. So much so, and I want people at home to know this, especially CNN viewers to know this, is that one of the jurors went to those defendants and apologized afterwards, gave him a hug, apologized, seeing what the government had put a poor guy up to who had to go to some Mexican restaurant across the street to get hot water. These people were exploited with credit cards up to $5,000, FBI agents, putting them up to a kidnapping plot that we were told was true but was entrapment. 14, Same thing with the Capitol Police, people Mr. letting Ramaswamy, them in freely. Many of those people Mr. then Mr. being Ramaswamy, charged. Ramaswamy, look, the government cannot I, put you up I to do something and then Mr. charge Ramaswamy, you for Ramaswamy, it. Look, That's wrong. I don't want to have to. That's wrong to the left I don't, the right. I don't, I don't, don't want to wanna have to interrupt you. I really don't. But I don't want you to mislead the audience here or I'm at not. home. I'm not. I think they've been misled 14, by the mainstream media. 14 the people, mainstream media has misled them. 14 people the were charged in that plot. Yeah. A majority of them were convicted. I said three of them were acquitted right, on but, grounds of but entrapment. What, what That's folks, a fact. What Dispute folks, me. Was I wrong about that? What folks need to understand. Was I wrong about what I said? What I folks was not. need to understand three people is that were acquitted on grounds of entrapment. Nine were convicted. A juror apologized. Nine to, were convicted. Yeah, but, you, but the three who were put up should but have never gotten to that stage of a trial. But back to the January 6th That's unacceptable in the United States. Look, I, I just want people to understand. Three people were acquitted. Nine people were convicted I in that you, plot. Abby. 